Jerry Hutch, who once led a gang of teenagers, rose to become one of the state's wealthiest criminals and is thought to have planned a string of bank robberies. He was known as the Monk for leading a moral life and emerged from the criminal underworld relatively undamaged, according to reports. With millions of euros and a sizable property portfolio, yet what brought him back and put him in the center of Ireland's fiercest feud was his loyalty to his family. The Kinahan cartel killed his brother, three nephews, and two friends during that time. He was apprehended on Thursday night in Fungirol on the Costa del Sol, according to an earlier this year issued European arrest order, and is currently being held in a Spanish police station cell. The deposed gang leader will very definitely be returned home to stand prosecution for allegedly planning the February 5, 2016 attack on the Regency Hotel which killed Kinahan enforcer David Byrne. Jerry the Monk Hutch's arrest in Spain is the most recent episode in a colorful life that has placed him in the sights of international law enforcement. Hutch, 58, had disappeared from Ireland in 2016, not long after his brother Eddie was killed. It had only been a few days before a hit team posing as Guardi and a man in a woman's costume broke into a boxing weigh-in at the Regency Hotel. Investigators have reason to think that members of the Hutch organized crime group planned the murder of the monk's nephew Gary Hutch that day, and Gardy believed that Daniel Kinahan was the intended victim. On that particular day, they failed to capture Kinahan but managed to assassinate David Byrne, a well-known member of the Byrne organized crime group, a rival gang to the Kinahan gang. Following it, there were at least 18 murders, making it one of Ireland's worst gangland feuds. Since then, Volum and Gotti have been looking into the event. Jerry's nephew Patrick Hutch was on trial at the Special Criminal Court, but the case was dismissed. The monk, who is believed to be the group's leader, was soon in the detective's sights once they refocused their efforts. In connection with the attack on the Regency, the director of public prosecutions directed that he and others be shy, and earlier this year, Gardy requested for a European arrest warrant. Looking back on the monk's past is necessary to comprehend his position in Irish gangland and his gradual ascent to public notoriety. He has been one of the most prominent gangland characters in the nation for decades. Yet despite that, he has never been found guilty of a serious crime and until the early 2000s had no known legal source of income. The Beginning The youngest of an eight-person family, Gerard Hutch was born in 1963 in the North Inner City. Eventually, they settled in the Summer Hill region. His mother Julia reared the kids while his father, known as Masher Hutch, worked as a stevedore in the nearby Dublin docks. He came from, in his own words, a low-income family and began his criminal career as a young member of the notorious Bugsy Malone street gang. Handbag thefts, automobile break-ins, and other minor thefts were the focus of their crimes. At the age of 15, he received his first prison sentence. Nevertheless, he also served time in an industrial school for further offenses. He began to concentrate more on high-end robberies and burglaries as he grew older. In Marino Mart in 1987, a Securicor cash and transit van was robbed for 1.7 million pounds. Hutch was thought to be the mastermind behind the operation. He first came to public attention in 1995 during the infamous Brinks Allied robbery at the company's depot in Clons Howe, North Dublin. In what was possibly Ireland's biggest robbery at the time, a gang entered the site during that raid with military precision using a makeshift bridge over a ditch. They stole $3 million. Following that raid, Hutch's attention from the Guardi was intensified, but charges against him were not likely due to his efforts to avoid being directly linked to his suspected crimes. Follow the money. The state took a different approach and the newly established Criminal Assets Bureau began focusing on his illegally acquired wealth. By 1997, the cab had filed a lawsuit in the High Court and was suing Hutch for millions of euros. At this point, he was wealthy and had purchased a number of properties, including a sizable home in Clontarf. In testimony provided to the High Court, Cab alleged that Hutch was the head of a gang that had committed more than £4 million worth of cash robberies. Hutch informed the judge that he was in financial trouble and planned to sell some of his properties to pay his legal bills. 
According to Cav, he stashed money in offshore accounts under the names of associates and invested a significant portion of the income from his illicit actions in real estate. The Bureau's strategy was to pursue those accounts, the portfolio of real estate, and the funds that were leaving Ireland and ending up in foreign institutions. To the Halifax International in St. Helier, the tax haven of Jersey, they followed the money. The investigators discovered that a P. Fowler delivered an envelope to the financial institution on Channel Island from the United Parcel Service Facility in Glasnevin. This, according to Cav, was done under the alias Patricia Fowler, the name of Jerry Hutch's wife. They reported that he had spent another £130,000 in his wife's name in a home on Dublin's Drury Street. Four further properties in Lower Buckingham Street had the names of various Hutch family members. In court, he argued that the funds used to purchase those houses came from a variety of settlements from personal injury accident cases. In the end, his legal actions were unsuccessful, and the cab invited him to deliver money. According to accounts, he met with senior officers of the Bureau and gave them money in a suitcase. Hutch watched as the detectives collected the wads of cash and pointed to the window, where they loaded it into a Brinks Allied armored cash in transit van. Limo service. He engaged in numerous new business endeavors in the years that followed, including the launch of Carry Anybody, a high-end luxury limousine service. Sources claim that he also kept a real estate portfolio worth more than 12 million euros, which included projects in Turkey, Spain, and Florida. Despite his assertions that he had done nothing wrong and his reputation for leading a monastic existence, he may have been accused over time of courting attention. He discussed his life and the difficulties of being one of Ireland's most odd criminals in a 2008 RD interview. He claimed that the cab case was a tax settlement rather than anything involving the proceeds of crime, positioning himself as the victim as opposed to the protagonist. He claimed to be nothing more than a shrewd real estate trader as he spoke with assurance and confidence. I did a lot of business in real estate. It was fun and that's how I made money. He asserted that the only information concerning the offenses he was charged with came from newspaper accounts of his purported exploits. After reading it in the newspaper, I'm starting to think I did it myself. There must be smoke without fire when you read these things every week. He eloquently stated, I lack knowledge I did wrong, but I think the seriousness of being put into Mountjoy prison at that age, it was like going to college for criminals in reference to going to prison at the age of 15. The north inner city neighborhood of Ballybow is where this reporter has undoubtedly seen people who respect Hutch. Notwithstanding his other alleged interests, he has actively supported one particular community project and is regarded by some as a sort of Robin Hood figure. Revenge. Events involving his nephew Gary Hutch and the Canavans served as the starting point for a dispute that left several members of the monk's family dead. Additionally, it has taken the lives of innocent people who were in the wrong location at the wrong time. Gary allegedly joined forces with the Kinahan criminal organization and invested proceeds from a tiger kidnapping in a narcotics shipment. Gary tried to get back at him in a botched shooting after his investment failed. He executed himself. And in September 2015, his former friend James Frizzy Quinn killed him in Spain. Quinn is currently incarcerated in Spain, receiving a 22-year sentence. The desire for vengeance that followed allegedly led Jerry Hutch and his friends to plan the attack on the Regency Hotel. The monk might fight for his extradition or return home to stand trial before the special criminal court in the following chapter of his story. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed today's video and found it interesting, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to be always updated with the most exciting content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.